Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1542. Hey, in this video, we got to look up the first numbers greater than the hurdle and less than the hurdle. Well, no problem. We're actually going to get two numbers in two different cells. And we'll get to see the awesome original lookup function, lookup, and of course, the faithful standbys, index, and match. Now, this question comes from Sagoon. He says, hey, I have these numbers in a column, and I want the first number greater than and less than 11. So 11 is our hurdle. And he gave these two numbers as an example. There's the numbers and a hurdle. And I already created defined names. I clicked up here after highlighting that range and typed numbers. That cell is called hurdle. Now, the first thing is if we're looking up the first number less than this hurdle, well, the hurdle would be right here in this sorted list. And that would be the first one, not this one, because in his instruction, he says, no, I want 7. So literally, he's finding that mark and finding the numbers on either side of it. By the way, if we didn't assume that this is sorted, the formulas would be much more complicated. And you can see them down below. Now, the way we're going to do this for the first one less than is we'll ask the question of all of these numbers. How many of you are less than a hurdle? True, true, true. We'll use approximate match lookup to get the last one, which will be 7. Then when we ask how many numbers are greater than 11, we'll get a bunch of trues here, and we'll use exact match lookup. And exact match when they're duplicates always gets the first one. All right, we're going to try these numbers right here. That's that defined name. How many of you are less than the hurdle? If I make sure my cursor's at the end and hit the F9 key, I can see that they evaluate to Boolean value, trues and falses. Now, before we can use approximate match lookup to get at the last true, I need to convert these to numbers. Control Z. The way we're going to do that is we're going to say 1 divided by, and then in parentheses, because we want to force that comparative operator to calculate before the math operator. Now when I hit F9, I've accomplished two important things. I've gotten rid of the falses, and now I only have numbers. If we give the lookup function some lookup value that is equal to or bigger than any number, it'll always find the last one. Control Z. So. We now have the choice. We can use index and match, which can handle this array operation, but we have to use a special keystroke. Or we can use the original lookup function, lookup. Lookup only does approximate match lookup, which is exactly what we want. And it's one of five functions that can handle array operations without worrying about what keystroke to use. All right, so lookup value, 1, comma, lookup vector. That is sort of like the match function, because lookup will take one, find a match, which will be our last one, tell lookup what the relative position is, and then comma. That relative position will be used for result vector, which are the actual items I want to go look up and return to the cell. Close parentheses, and that beautiful formula will work. It'll always find the first value on the upper side of the 11. Now, if I change this to 13, sure enough, it's still going to give me 7. But if I change it to 15, there it is. With 15, it finds the first item on this side. Change it back to 11. 11 is right in the middle, but it still finds the item on that side. Now, when we want to find the item on the other side, since all of these are greater than 11, We'll create that array. We'll ask the question, hey, how many of you are greater than that? F9, now the trues are on this side. Now we still need to convert these to divide by 0 errors and 1. But when we do exact match lookup, because there's duplicates, exact match is programmed to only find the first one. Control Z, 1 divided by open parentheses, F9. There we go. There's our ones. Control Z. Now we can't use lookup here, because lookup only does approximate match. So here, this is where we're going to have to use index and match. Lookup value for match, 1, comma. There's the lookup array, comma. And here's the trick for finding the first value when there's duplicates, exact match. 
0, close parentheses. Now, match, unlike lookup, the lookup array argument in match will not calculate this array operation correctly unless we use the special keystroke Control Shift Enter. We're not done yet, but match will deliver the relative position. If I were to enter this, Control Shift Enter, it tells me 1, 2, 3, 4. That is the position of the item we're trying to look up. By the way, if you're in Office 365 because of the new Excel calculation engine, F2, Enter. We don't have to use that special keystroke anymore. But there's the relative position, so now I use index, array. Those are the items I want to look up and retrieve, comma. And then match is sitting in the row number. Index and match can do its thing. Now to enter this, if I'm in Office 365 with the new calculation engine, I can simply hit Enter. But in any other version besides Office 365, because the match lookup array argument cannot calculate this array operation unless we use that special keystroke, we have to enter the formula with Control, Shift, and Enter. Then we look up to the formula bar, and when we see those curly brackets, we know Excel calculated this array formula correctly. Now look at that 11. It's right in between 7 and 13, and our formulas got exactly what we want. If I change the lookup value to 15, there's our hurdle. And we found the values on either side of the hurdle. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. All right, we'll see you next video.